I believe God loves us and wants us in heaven. Dr. Franklin Graham, an evangelical leader, is making an unexpected statement that could revolutionize faith and humanitarian activity. He's led various programs that have altered lives for years. People are wondering as his departure becomes louder, what may cause such a big choice? He must balance his family's history, his problems, and his goal's future. What's surprising about this turn? Franklin Graham had to say farewell for sad reasons, and what that implies for his beneficiaries. Childhood. Franklin Graham was born into a prominent Christian family in Asheville, North Carolina on July 14, 1952. One of the most influential 20th century evangelists was his father, Billy Graham. He preached Christianity to millions worldwide. Franklin's mother, Ruth Belgram, was devout. She was raised by Chinese medical missionaries and valued her faith. Franklin was one of Ruth and Billy's five kids. Their kids learned strong Christian values, emphasizes faith, prayer, and Bible rules. Franklin learned Christian values and the expectations of being the son of a prominent preacher growing up in the Graham family. People worldwide knew his father as the preacher of massive Christian crusades and his mother was wise and religious. Franklin was raised with the Bible as a lifestyle. His family expected him to be Christian like his father. Franklin rebelled against his rigorous Christian upbringing as a teenager. He struggled with his father's legacy and its responsibilities. He rejected Christian living. In his teens, Franklin changed his lifestyle from what he was taught. Many of his family and friends were astonished by his actions. He didn't want to obey the rules or believe in his upbringing's religion. His disobedience worsened with age, causing horrible things. Franklin was expelled from his New York boarding school for misbehavior. He suffered in his youth. He struggled with studies and focus throughout college. Franklin prioritized self-interest over religion and the future at the time. He did what made him feel good at the time without considering the long-term consequences. Franklin was far from his parents' dreams during these years. His life wasn't going as his family intended, and the burden of having to meet their expectations only appeared to drag him further from Christianity. His childhood was filled with religion and Christian beliefs. But in his teens and early 20s, he rebelled and sought happiness alone. Spiritual growth Franklin Graham experienced a life-changing encounter age 22. He had been defying his upbringing until now. Everything changed following a trip to Jerusalem. Franklin was transformed by the Gospel of John at the Holy City. Franklin began reading the Bible in Jerusalem. He began with John. Being born anew jumped out to him as he read. Jesus informs Nicodemus in John 3.3 that only the reborn may see the kingdom of God. This idea moved Franklin greatly. His whole life he heard about Christianity. The gospel became real and personal to him only then. He realized he needed a new start with God after reading about spiritual rebirth. Franklin realized Christianity was more than merely being decent and following the laws. The book was about spiritual growth and a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Being born again made him assume he could quit drinking, rebelling, and being self-centered. Now devote your life to God. Franklin's life changed after this realization. He had to cease denying his discovery. Franklin changed his lifestyle after this spiritual revelation. He quit drinking and smoking, which played major roles in his wild years. He prayed and studied the Bible more as his connection with God grew. His aims shifted, and he realized his existence was designed to do more than make him happy. Franklin wanted to help more than ever because of his beliefs. He was drawn to follow his father's path, not merely because his family expected him to. He genuinely wanted to spread the gospel. He wasn't just acting differently. His spiritual revelation inspired him to serve God and help others experience the same. Call to ministry Franklin Graham was drawn to ministry after his spiritual awakening. He took time to accept this calling. Being affiliated to Billy Graham, his father's group made his evangelism debut easier. Franklin had always preached, but he didn't see how he could help until he believed in God. Franklin wasn't sure of his mission's direction. He didn't want to blindly follow his father. However, his job with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association allowed him to consider ministry. He traveled with the team and learned how to arrange and execute preaching engagements. His education helped him comprehend how the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association spread the gospel worldwide. At the time, Samaritan's Purse head Bob Pierce had a major influence on Franklin. Pierce always helped individuals in need around the world, often in painful locations. Franklin admired Pierce's evangelism and humanitarianism, and this connection struck him deeply. Pierce served differently than other pastors. Doing good for others shows Christ-centered love. Franklin and Pierce's first mission trip was 1973, a pivotal time in his life. That journey taught him how much people need help around the world and inspired him to help others. Franklin observed firsthand the suffering in various countries. This inspired him to aid the needy. He was called to teach and care for people's physical needs to exhibit God's love. He was transformed by this. 
This outreach journey launched Franklin's evangelism and charitable efforts. He realized he wanted to help people, especially those affected by famine, conflict, and natural disasters. He found a new approach to minister that combined faith and action. After this, Franklin realized he could use his life to preach the faith and aid others. Franklin sought support from Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and Samaritan's Purse. He led both groups using his love of service and assisting people to change the world. These early steps led Franklin to his calling. Integrating Evangelism with Humanitarian Activities After Bob Pierce died, Franklin Graham became Samaritan's Purse President. He was 26 but had already assumed a major leadership role. Pierce was Franklin's mentor and their work shaped his service philosophy. Franklin took over after Pierce died, despite being young and unaccustomed to managing so many people. Franklin expanded Samaritan's Purse under his leadership and became famous. He led Samaritan's Purse from a small organization to a global humanitarian force. Franklin intended to continue Pierce's work and add to it. He believed the group might aid more people, especially in conflict, starvation, and natural disaster zones. Franklin worked hard to ensure Samaritan's Purse served individuals physically and spiritually. He believed they were interconnected. He believed people's spiritual and bodily needs should be met. Franklin wants the organization to share God's love effectively. This strategy made Samaritan's Purse stand out as a group that concerned about long-term health and current needs. Samaritan's Purse expanded to include Operation Christmas Child under Franklin, delivering gifts to needy kids worldwide and spreading the gospel. Franklin's leadership helped the group respond faster and better to global issues. In the years that followed, Franklin led Samaritan's Purse in large humanitarian endeavors like hurricane, earthquake, tsunami, and war zone relief. He and the organization's objective was to spread religion and serve the needy. Samaritan's Purse has helped millions in over 100 nations. Franklin's belief that meaningful service should touch the body and soul inspired its goal. Samaritan's Purse has responded to some of the world's worst calamities under Franklin Graham. His disaster aid work displays his desire to help others. The 2010 Haiti earthquake and Syrian refugee crisis are instances of similar endeavors. Haiti was messed up after the earthquake. Hundreds of thousands died and more were displaced. Franklin personally supervised assistance efforts in Haiti and made sure Samaritan's Purse arrived first. They provided emergency medical attention, accommodation, clean water, and food to the injured. Franklin's presence in Haiti demonstrated his leadership. He tackled the issue head on. His crew established field hospitals and rebuilt villages following the tragedy. Franklin and Samaritan's Purse aided millions of Syrian refugees. Many refugees fled to Jordan and Lebanon, where they resided in temporary camps without essential services. Franklin made sure Samaritan's Purse could help. Whether food, shelter, or health care, he led from the front and underlined the importance of real and helpful care for people in these undertakings, demonstrating servant leadership. Project Christmas Child Franklin's Operation Christmas Child is famous. This effort fills shoe boxes with kids' gifts and supplies. The boxes contain toys, school supplies, hygiene products, and a Christian message of hope. Operation Christmas Child is built on the simple premise that children should be joyful and know someone cares, especially in bad times. Franklin was crucial to expanding this initiative. It began as a little initiative in the early 1990s. Many joined Operation Christmas Child. The organization provides millions of shoe boxes to youngsters in over 170 nations. Franklin wanted the effort to go beyond giving neglected youngsters gifts. He wanted it to spread love and hope. Operation Christmas Child is crucial. It makes kids happy and often comforts families in stressful times. Franklin Graham's philanthropic activity goes beyond immediate need. He wants to help communities rebuild after catastrophes and equip them to become self-sufficient. Samaritan's Purse sometimes lingers after a disaster. This could happen after a hurricane, earthquake, conflict, or starvation. To help towns recover, they restore hospitals, schools, and residences over time. Franklin prioritizes neighborhood church collaboration. He believes local involvement makes changes last. Samaritan's Purse helps individuals physically and spiritually through local churches. Churches regularly aid families when Samaritan's Purse moves on. This ensures people get the care they need to recover. Festivals for Evangelical Outreach Franklin Graham has been organizing large evangelical festivals since 1989, continuing his father's work. Franklin must now spread the message worldwide. Tens of thousands of people attend these large festivals to hear the message of faith and optimism. Franklin's events are structured like his father's long-running crusades. Sharing the truth and inviting others to accept Jesus Christ's salvation is the fundamental purpose. Music, testimony, and Franklin's straightforward, Bible-based teaching are common during festivals. Franklin wants to reach newcomers to the message. These events attract all ages. These events are important for more than just themselves. 
They often lead to spiritual rebirth in their locations. Local churches prepare for and are affected by festivals. Franklin's outreach is credited with increasing church attendance and service interest. Franklin Graham has updated his preaching by using modern methods of communication. Franklin realized that live events and other traditional methods may not work in the digital age. To keep his festivals culturally relevant and accessible, he integrated social networking, live streaming, and other new technologies. Online streaming lets folks who can't attend his shows join in. It has made the gospel more accessible to more individuals. Social media is used to engage with younger individuals who may not attend church or other public events. Franklin has met individuals on their phones and laptops to spread optimism and faith. Younger people are especially affected by modernization. These new tools have helped many young people connect with events. Sometimes it affects entire families. Franklin has been effective because he has adapted to these developments without changing the gospel. Franklin Graham's events typically shift locations, which is most evident. Church attendance often soars during festivals, and ministry tries to recover. Many people convert to Christianity at festivals, which can affect their families and communities. Franklin makes sure festivities continue after the event. He believes lasting spiritual progress requires follow-up and continuing support. Samaritan's Purse and the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association collaborate with local churches during events. These congregations welcome new Christians and provide the resources they need to grow. Collaboration with surrounding churches is crucial. Franklin knows the neighborhood church is greatest for community improvement. Many churches are energized after festivities. Many feel their ministry and outreach have grown. Reviving buildings may be possible, enabling them to contribute to their communities. Disputes. Franklin Graham hasn't hidden his political views. Over time, he has spoken out more on political and social issues. His staunch support for Donald Trump during and after his presidency is one of his most notable traits, especially hardline Christians. That the country required his leadership to defend religious liberty was his defense against Trump's detractors. Franklin has supported candidates and spoken out on difficult issues including LGBTQ rights, immigration, and religious freedom. He firmly opposes same-sex marriage and LGBTQ rights. It has sparked controversy. Franklin has publicly stated that marriage should only be between a man and a woman. People who think this is unjust have criticized him. Franklin has campaigned for stricter immigration regulations in various countries, but with mixed results. He has stressed the importance of Samaritan's Purse, although his immigration views have been considered as inconsistent with his values. He also advocates for religious freedom, especially for Christians whose values are being questioned by modern society. Franklin's outspoken political and social beliefs enrage many, within evangelicals and in daily life. He defends traditional Christian ideals, which some Christians enjoy. In an increasingly secular world, he is a powerful voice for religious freedom. However, some, especially Christians, say he is too political and fosters divisiveness by addressing these issues in a hostile manner. Many individuals dislike Franklin's outspoken views, especially on LGBTQ rights. Some say his speech is too stern and doesn't convey his father Billy Graham's kindness and acceptance. Billy Graham held typical Christian values yet was calmer when discussing challenging topics. Sharing the gospel was his main occupation. He was more open and reached out to as many individuals as possible, regardless of their background. Billy Graham's legacy was inviting and spreading the religion to everybody, regardless of politics or society. He focused on Jesus Christ and avoided political parties. Franklin, meanwhile, has become more political. It strained the Graham family and the Christian community. The Franklin family has criticized him for using his prominence to promote political agendas, saying it detracts from Billy Graham's message of love and grace. Franklin holds on to his values despite these discrepancies, saying he's defending biblical values in a world more hostile to Christianity. Personal loss Billy Graham's February 2018 death affected Franklin Graham's life. His father was more than a parent to him. He lost an influential leader in his life and faith. Billy Graham's preaching influenced people worldwide. Franklin suffered because he missed his father and wanted his counsel and knowledge. Franklin recalled the lessons his father had given him. He remembered their discussions about faith, service, and helping others. A hole in his life was hard to fill without his father. Franklin understood people expected him to continue his father's church work. This worry was about spreading the faith and meeting his father's high standards of character and behavior. Franklin wanted his work to reflect his father's lifelong reputation for honesty and kindness. Franklin also contemplated religion. He contemplated how his father's religion had inspired so many. After this, he considered what it meant to live his beliefs. Franklin felt his father taught him more than public ministry. He also informed him of his faith and devotion to God. His father's legacy went beyond TV programs and meetings, in peaceful prayer assisting others and saying farewell. 
Franklin Graham recently made important decisions about his preaching and leadership career. His emotional, spiritual, and health difficulties have been plaguing him, so saying farewell is more than just giving up. Franklin contemplated his life as this moment approached, managing a large religious organization like Samaritan's Purse. Franklin chose for health reasons. As he ages, he's realized how physically demanding his profession is. Running a global problem-solving organization requires energy and determination. Franklin says he wants to keep leading well. He recognizes that taking a break may be necessary to preserve his contributions and health. In addition to his health issues, Franklin has considered his duty. He understands the responsibility his father, Billy Graham, left. Franklin often talks about how hard it is to continue his father's work. While establishing himself at work, balance has been crucial to his decision making. As he contemplated his resignation, he felt Samaritan's purse and the Christian community needed new leaders. As Franklin prepares to leave, many will wonder what will become of his church. People view his resignation as a major move for his family and all evangelicals. Who will replace him as leader and how the group's direction will change are questions. Many religious people admire Franklin as a leader. His departure could allow new leaders to bring their own perspectives and ideas to the task. His many helpers carry on his legacy after this chapter. If you enjoyed this chat, please like, share, and follow for more celebrity insights.